Assalamu alaikum. Today's topic will be on the middle ear cavity. The clinical scenario we'll be looking at is on otitis media, the inflammation of the middle ear. Now what you see in front of you is an otoscopic uh, view of the tympanic membrane. Now this is not the normal view. The normal view of a tympanic membrane is like so. So the clinical scenario of otitis media, the presentation, is someone who complains of pain in the ear that usually is aggravated on chewing and that pain radiates towards to the temples or to the jaw, maybe sometimes even down to the neck. Along with the pain, there is sometimes a decrease in hearing, sometimes uh, loss of balance depending on the severity of the infection and at the same time particularly in children there is fever and you might often see them pulling on their ear tugging on their ear lobes because of the pain and the discomfort they feel the pain gradually increases up to a certain point where it becomes severe after that point here you can see this is actually the height of that point where the tympanic membrane is bulging. This over here is the bulging part of the tympanic membrane. Behind this is all that pus and fluid, this metary fluid. Here you can see the handle of the mandible. All of this are the vessels which are engorged. There's a lot of congestion here. Compared to a normal one, you can see how it is more concave, flat on the edges right here. Here is the handle of the malleus again and the handle and down below is the pars tensa, the tense part of the tympanic membrane while here we have the pars flaccida, the flaccid part which is forming the superior tympanic recess. So this is your normal tympanic membrane and here once again is one of otitis media where you can see the tympanic membrane is bulging. At the height of the pain eventually all that pus is going to pierce a push through this tympanic membrane and there's going to be a bit of a perforation here you can see a perforation in the tympanic membrane this is the body's way of trying to drain out all that pus and it is during this phase that the person is then relieved it is a resolution of the pain he feels relieved and he might notice discharge coming out from the ear the discharge that people notice from their ear after that such a pain is actually all that pus leaking out through a perforated membrane. Obviously a perforation of this caliber is going to be heal on its own. Anything larger however would take a long time or might not heal at all. So because we need the tympanic membrane for the conduction, proper conduction of sounds. So small perforations like this usually heal on its own. Now here in front of us we see a 3D model of the external ear, the middle ear cavity, also known as the tympanic cavity, and the internal ear. To put things in perspective, what we're looking at is the petrous part of the temporal bone. Imagine we're looking at the skull from top view with the calvaria of skull cap removed. This is your petrous part of temporal bone and here is the squamous part of temporal bone, your temples region where you have the ear auricle attached outside. Our focus is not on the oracle or the internal, we'll be looking at the middle ear, but just a little small little intro to the external auditory meters which connects the middle ear to the oracle outside. Now this meatus, this tube like structure, it's a bit S shaped. The external one third, uh, well, it's two third, is cartilaginous. You can see the cartilage bone here. This is the same cartilage which makes up your oracle. A lot of fat as well while the remaining inner one-third is bony the entirety of this tube is lined with the skin which is continuous on the outside and this skin also comes to overlie the tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane over here what you're seeing is actually inflamed and bulging excuse me here we go that's why it doesn't look proper but here the skin actually covers the tympanic membrane and it is here that you have the ceremonious glands which are exclusive to this line which produces the wax which in you find in your ear 
and uh, it's all innervated by the oracotemporal nerve you can see the words used in this oracotemporal oracle and temporal it's a branch of the mandibular nerve which itself is a branch of the trigeminal nerve and it supplies also the outside portion of the tympanic membrane and there are some fibers of the vagus nerve which also supply it while the glossopharyngeal will supply the inside of the tympanic membrane so sound waves are picked up by the oracle travel through the s-shaped external auditory meatus and then they'll reach the tympanic membrane the middle ear cavity right over here let us remove all this inflammatory fluid so that things become more clear the whole tympanic cavity is has a matchbox type shape the reason I say matchbox is because it is rectangular here the tympanic membrane actually is forming the lateral wall outside while over here where you can see this cochlea and this is forming the medial wall here is your medial wall and here is the lateral wall you can see how closely they are opposed to each other then we have the superior wall the roof which is actually formed by the petrous part of temporal bone this portion is also called the tegment tempani it is so thin that uh, in worst case scenario any infection here can actually erode this bone and all that infection and pus can reach the meninges of the brain causing encephalitis but that's in the worst case scenario while the floor here is again bony but here you have the passage of the jugular bulb the internal jugular vein is closely passing through here so we call it the jugular floor again the roof was tegment tympani the floor think of it as jugular floor laterally we have the tympanic membrane medially we have the promenatory coming from the you can see this round edge bulge here the promenatory anteriorly and posteriorly now this is interesting anteriorly we have this connection right over here the eustachian tube also known as the pharyngotympanic tube this tube connects the middle ear with the pharynx our throat and it's because of this direct connection that any air we swallow can pass through this tube into the middle ear and equalize pressure if supposedly this thing was entirely closed this would be a enclosed area and air from the outside won't be able to compress or oscillate the tympanic membrane because the air on the inside is not displaced but because this is open air is constantly equalized with the one on the outside now this eustachian tube itself has a bony part the initial part and the distal part is cartilaginous this is also one of the reasons why you may have seen certain uh, pediatricians they tend to for any kid a baby with a throat infection they give ear drops antibiotics through the ear the reason being is because those drops actually pass through the ear they are absorbed through the tympanic membrane into the middle ear and they pass through the eustachian tube into the throat this is actually much more convenient because doing it directly through the mouth sometimes can lead to aspiration and that causes its own problems so this were the, these were the boundaries what were the contents if you see over here the lateral wall or aside from the tympanic membrane we have the ossicles malleus we have the incus and the stapes the stapes is touched, attached to the round window of the internal ear here we have the tensor tympani it is actually attached to the malleus and contraction of this muscle causes stiffening of the malleus bone so that there is less oscillation this is actually useful and as a safety precaution to prevent any loud noises from damaging our ear a loud noise would cause the tympanic membrane to oscillate strongly this muscle will then tighten it to prevent those oscillations here you can see a nerve coming out from the posterior wall this is your cora tympani a branch of the facial nerve basically the facial nerve is actually passing through the uh, posterior wall you see over here you may have noticed this is your internal acoustic meters if that was the external acoustic uh, meters on the outside 
here we have the internal acoustic meatus and you have three nerves here one nerve actually is composed of two parts cochlear and vestibular going to the internal ear while the other is your facial nerve the nervous intermediate part of the facial nerve as well as the, the motor part so that nerve is actually passing on the back side of the ear and it will exit via the stylomastoid foramen the stylar process is usually in front and the mastoid is on the back here's your mastoid with fill of the air cells so here you can see the facial nerve coming outside and here it's been highlighted the entire passage of the facial nerve coming outside here we'll see the facial nerve supply the muscles of the face so any infection here can potentially also affect the facial nerve causing facial paralysis this branch right here is the cora tempani which goes to our tongue and takes the sensations of taste along with aside from that there's not much else as regarding the contents you can see here basically they have not shown it here tympanic plexus should be present on the wall right over here on the promenade tree and uh, beside from that these are all the contents generally in your exam what they'll ask usually is to draw the boundaries and the contents as well and then they would usually ask a clinical question related to this